Hello, 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 hello. Once again, a very good evening to all viewers. Thank you for joining us today. Today's topic is again, I would like to say the word again. <laughs> the word again and again is keep on coming in because it is indeed a very interesting topic. And with me, there's a couple of experts as well, and they are also my buddies. So today we're going to share a, a great topic, which what we say that trainers on board. So if you do have any questions pertaining to fitness, health, or anything that you want to talk about in, in terms of motivation, mindset, I think this is the best time to ask us questions because uh, all of us have a different expertise in the field. Without any ado, I'm going to first bring in the first guest, which is Pat. Let's bring Pat in. Hello, Pat. Hi, Vadan. Hi. Thanks so for let, having me on board. Of course. Just hang on a second. Let me just bring another man in. Where's the man? Come on, Zasi. Jump in. Hello. Hey, okay. you see the man. Thank you for having me on board again, Vanan. Thank you, Sasi. Thank you, Pat, for joining us. As you all know, today's uh, topic is trainers on board, right? But before we, we talk about trainers on board, I would just to let know for everyone who's watching us or tuning to us that we all are buddies. So we know for more than, what, 10 years? Or more than 20 yeah. years? Is it 20 already? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I mean, I can feel it's 20 because I'm already starting to have grey hairs. But I don't mm -hmm. see any gray hair in the both of you, so I'm not sure if you're using any particular dye or you want to recommend me something. <laughs> it's just a lot of cover up, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see it uh, live on camera. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, so we have almost about 12 people that is uh, tuning to us right now. Like I mentioned, this topic is going to be a very interesting topic again because I, I think uh, this is the time where this current pandemic, uh, people need some kind of uh, some kind of motivation, some kind of uh, theory or practical in terms of what they should be doing. So I think this platform with you guys uh, on board, I think it's going to be an awesome session. Before I go on, but uh, Pat, why don't I do this, right? In, instead of me going to do the basic introduction, blah, 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 blah. Why don't you do, you do the introduction, buddy. Come on, it's your time. Okay, okay, sure. All right, um, but then thanks again for having me on board. Uh, actually, it's nice to see you guys. Um, and first thing first, uh, guys, happy Hari Raya. Um, it's, I, I, I understand it's, it's it, it not a usual Hari Raya. Everybody's in isolation, but nevertheless, I hope everybody um, had a, uh, is having a good time back home. And um, a very quick uh, intro about me. Uh, my name is Padma and I've been in the fitness industry for the past, uh, say, 14 years. Um, I have coached um, kids right up to older adults, uh, right up to um, 92 years old. And I have dealt with a lot of um, uh, health complications, adults with a lot of health complications, mobility issues, stability issues, and uh, um, so on. Um, it has been my passion. It's actually my first job uh, ever since I left school. Now, I was an athlete prior to that. And I uh, must say, I never get tired doing this work. It has been such a blessing to be able to get paid, um, um, you know, doing what you love. Yeah. And, um, and of course, um, the most important thing is uh, today uh, I'm able to sit with these two gentlemen that I've had the privilege to work with in the past. Um, and I'm sure to learn a lot from you guys. So thank you for that. And yes, and what I'll be briefing um, the viewers today is uh, more than anything, I think it's very much related to the current situation, um, the importance of exercise during uh, quarantine. Uh, I think a lot of us are, are still wobbly from the, from the time that this, this, this pandemic has started. And, and for me personally, I have, I realized that uh, the first one to two weeks, um, it was really tough, but then after a while it got a little better and exercise actually have helped, helped a lot, um, making me feel so much better. And I started uh, connecting back to with my clients, friends and, and so on. So yeah, I think uh, I'm going to be trying, trying to just um, explain a few things that I, that I, I know of about how exercise can influence you during this point of time. Thank you, Pat. That was a lovely uh, introduction by you. So I was glad to know a little bit more of your in-depth 
I think, of course, you talk all about professional, but you never talk anything that is outside of professional. But the one, we will keep it offline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a secret. Huh? We shouldn't be exposing too much on live. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you again. I mean, um, I know you have done a couple of uh, talks before in conferences and also for corporates. So I think uh, a lot of viewers today is going to be benefit from here as well. Thank you, Pat. So the next person is Mr. Sase from the Fight Zone. Sase, please, your introduction. My introduction. Wow, well, one and uh, you're gonna you're gonna end up saying you know secrets about me as well, right? <laughs> so, yes, I'm gonna say that, but yeah. But then again, um, yeah, I've been a trainer for since 14, 15 years now. I started off as a trainer. That was my first job. Um, that's where I also met Barnan. And then um, in, in our previous job, I uh, went on to be a master trainer. That's where I met Padma in Malaysia for the first time. Right? And yep, uh, yeah, yep, so, yeah, that was way, way long ago. And uh, now we're all together doing a, a live show. We are all... Yeah, it's it's been a long time, and <clears throat> training has been a passion, obviously. And obviously, now I run my own business where um, where we have fight zone, we have three outlets now. So it's 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 been a full circle, I feel, right? Because um, going into everybody talks about if you if you yeah. work in a job that you're passionate about, right? Then then you don't have to work any day, right? So yeah, I went into a job that I was passionate about. Finally, finally, I'm passionate about running a business and uh, entrepreneurship, and which is also in fitness. So it makes it a whole lot easier. And uh, yeah, basically enjoying the period till COVID nineteen decided to come along and uh, disrupt everything <laughs> a bit, right? But, yeah. Throw yeah. us off the grid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is basically what exactly happened. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is basically the benefits of heat training and things you can do at home to actually achieve that heat training. So all our topics should complement one another. I'm happy to answer any other questions as well. And I'm sure the the viewers can direct the questions at any, any one of us, right, Vane? Uh Yes, that's right. But uh, of course, we'll come to the main channel. Then we will take yeah. it uh, at the last... Also, if you have a Q&A, just, I mean, all those questions just keep on coming in. Yep. So is that your introduction, Sasi? Or is there anything? Yeah, that's basically it. I, yeah, I, I've got nothing much to say here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sasi. No worries. Uh, obviously, I mean, today it's going to be a little different for me because I'm going to speak in, in the sense of a trainer as well, uh, in the same time as a moderator. Uh, just talk about a little bit. Not so much. Uh, in my past experiences, it's about 20 years of humble experiences. Every day is a learning experiences where you need to learn uh, everything about fitness because fitness is always evolving. And it's not just about looking good, but it's about looking well in the inner part. So we are talking about inner part and outer part. And with the two experts today on board, we're going to cover a very good topic. I'm going to cover a little bit on today about better health, which I think is very important. We're going to talk a little bit about diabetes. We're going to talk a little bit of cardiovascular diseases, try to compress it with the other two speakers, of course, with Sassi talking about benefits of heat and Padma talking about the exercises during quarantine. I think that's going to be a very holistic. So let's uh, kick it up without any view. So let's get uh, Padma to start off first. Padma, are you ready, buddy, to, for your presentation? Yep. yep. So all yours, buddy. Set and ready to go. Yeah. All right. So, guys, I just want to ask you a quick question. So, um, I know this is a new normal that we live in right now, but are you currently exercising? Now, if you're exercising, that's great. Keep up the good job because that's going to benefit you a lot during this, this pandemic. But if you're not, then you might want to listen to my five reasons, the importance of ex exercise during this, this tough period, right? Okay, so first thing first, um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know this, but let me just run through with you guys. And anyways, um, Basically, quarantine lifestyle, it's quite sedentary. And we all know that basically. So in the past, if it's going to the school, uh, right now you're doing e-learning. If it's going to the office, right now you're working from home. And if you used to do all your chores and you have your daily routine and all that commuting here and there, like for example, uh, to the bus stop or to the MRT station or to the office back and forth, 
all those calories, what happened? I, that's just no longer, um, uh, you no longer burn those calories anymore when you are in quarantine and you are basically sitting a lot more than usual, right? And, you know, like even now we are still sitting, <laughs> you see. So it's different. If you're back in the gym, I'll probably standing and I'll be doing this, but, you know, we are still sitting. So that means um, quarantine has actually removed the uh, calorie burning mechanism from your routine. Now, what happens then, you tend to gain the unhealthy weight uh, every week or every month because, you know, all along we thought this is going to end in May, but right now it's going to extend it in June. And we also don't know, uh, we can only hope, like what we spoke, uh, I, like what, what we spoke earlier, Sasi, we can only hope, uh, we don't know for sure. So that's why it's very important to, to, to remember, you know, um, the, the calories are not being burnt. So that's a term we call it NEAT, N-E-A-T. NEAT basically stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenes. Uh, it's basically the, the energy to expend. Uh, doing everything except... Uh, apart from sleeping, uh, eating, or any kind of sport, uh, sport activity, uh, except apart from that, all of it goes under what you call need. So, and the need basically drops significantly during this period of time, um, and you're not utilizing all those calories. So, what will happen? And that just gets stored in the body, and then that's gonna end up, you know, you start gaining weight. Now, that's that's basically the reason number one. And reason number two, now this is coming from personal experience, okay? I have been a trainer for the past 14 years and I've always been on the go. So I conduct like six to eight sessions per day and I'm always moving. So if I'm not in the gym, I'm walking, I'm taking the train, taking the bus and, and I'm conducting coaching. So I'm always moving. Now, when this COVID happened, uh, it has just, my, my steps especially has taken a, a, a huge impact. Like I no longer move. And what had happened, I actually caught myself gradually walking to the fridge and opening up and start looking for something fun to put in my mouth. But, but bear in mind, I'm not hungry. I'm just bored. I'm just bored to death. So, you know, a lot of times, so, so I think I, am, I know I'm not the only one. I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to this you tend to ingest more calories than usual. And all these calories comes from, it's basically empty calories, right? It's just snacks here and there. So that's why you need to, uh, in order for you to, um, for you to uh, burn those calories, it's very important for you to exercise, like, like workout. If you don't, then again, that's gonna end up, you know, you're not moving and then you're putting in more snacks into your body and that's just gonna double up. The, so the Padma, uh, let me just ask you something. So how can one can prevent them from walking to the fridge? Or is there something that you tie something in their cable tie of their legs so that they can't go to the fridge? Or, you know, don't buy all the interesting stuff, you know, just put things like that as sugar or no sugar, uh, don't put carbs, you know. What, what, what do you think? What do you recommend to put in the fridge? Yeah, I think uh, first thing first, you should, uh, liquid, you should replace your liquid, you know, instead of having uh, soda or anything like that, just have like, maybe uh, fruit um, insulated drinks, you know, like how they cut fruits and they put inside the water and you still get some kind of taste to your water. Or there's a lot of, uh, or another option is there's a lot of soda these days has no sugar in it, like zero sugar. Uh, although we don't recommend that so often, but once once in a while, just to, you know, uh, uh, you, know uh, uh, you know, trying to, what do you say, um, satisfy your craving, you can do that. But apart from that, the first thing first, you shouldn't keep any snack in the fridge. That is the <laughs> first thing you should do because it's always going to be calling you. It's like, Sussy, I'm here. Vance, yeah. I'm here. Come see me. <laughs> okay. You know? Okay. So now is a moment of confession, bro. Now is a moment of confession. Do you have anything that you mentioned in your fridge? Yes or no? Of course, yeah. I, I have to I have to admit. So th this is why this is why speaking from experience, the first one to two weeks, I was bored to death because I just didn't know what to do. And the next thing I will reach out for is food. Food makes me happy. And then I realized when I caught myself doing it, I was like, no, this can't happen because 
um, you know, this is not the right way. And I'm plus, and then it hit me that I'm not moving as much as I, as I, as I used to, you know, before the quarantine. So, yeah. So that's why I, I think, um, mm, although we don't realize it so much, but if you really pay attention, you're actually putting in a lot of, uh, you know, snacks, uh, uh, you're actually taking in more calorie than usual. Right. Um, and number three, I also realized this um, because this COVID has, I mean, the, the good thing, the positive side about COVID is that now we have a lot more time as how we, uh, compared to, uh, you know, back then. Now there's a lot more time and I think we should really utilize this time to try to do something productive for our health and our, for our mental health, for physical health and mental health. So working out basically gives you a lot of benefits, right? Because what happens when you exercise, you actually release, the brain actually releases, or the body actually releases endorphin and serotonin. It actually helps you to, um, you know, battle. Um, I, I have spoken to a few clients, you know, some of them started feeling the, uh, the feeling of hopelessness. Um, because, you know, especially if you are somebody who are very much into social um, you always go out and you always you're not at home and you like the social circle and all of that so this social isolation and the stress from quarantine can have it's it's like a basically a recipe for disaster for uh depression so that's why when you exercise you tend to uh, it helps you to elevate your mood and also helps to uh, bring down um you know counter the the, the effect of feeling uh, depressed um, yeah, so those, those are a few, few things. And, and of course, the last part of it is the, uh, the immune system, right? So when you exercise, compared to somebody who are not exercising, you actually have, um, how, how do you call it? You actually have spent more chance fighting the virus. Uh, a lot of research has gone into this and, and people, WHO constantly reminding us that, you know, 150 uh, minutes of exercise is the most basic you can do um, in a week. Um, mm -hmm. So be it low intensity or the vigorous, but you keep moving on a daily basis. Uh, it's that's that is the most important thing, because um, when we come out from the uh, the uh, COVID from this pandemic, we want to be still feeling back to ourselves, or even better, or more fitter, or stronger, and not letting all this uh, this this uh, this pandemic effect effect us uh, mentally, right? So yeah, these are the few things I I believe is quite crucial um, during this time for everybody to take note. And if you have not yet uh, uh, starting to exercise, I think you need because. There's so many fitness centers and they're they are so generous. A lot of traders, they are very generous these days. They're offering a lot of online classes, complimentary online classes. You know, you can do some basic workouts. You don't need gym equipment or whatsoever just by using body weight. There's so much, so many apps out there. So you can utilize all of this and trying to and, and just get some exercise in because uh, at the end of the day, health is wealth, right? Uh, you, you still want to be able to do a lot more things, move around, and still be fit uh, after this pandemic is over. So, yep, that's my few points, uh, how you can use exercise to battle this sort of, um, uh, I mean, counter this sort of uh, negative effect. Thank you, Padma. Thank you so much for the uh, topic on the, the importance of exercise during quarantine. And then I think yep. it's indeed that everyone should start. I mean, it's. I think it's quite normal, Sasi, right? Everybody mm. to get lazy. I think it's a human nature to get lazy. But I think, yeah. what do you think about that? What do you think about laziness? <laughs> I think it's in everyone. I think I got lazy too. There you go. Um, <laughs> I think in this uh, pandemic, like Padma said, I, I used the easy way out. So I didn't, I mean, there was no gym. Uh, there was nothing. Unfortunately, um, all the businesses are opening 2nd of, of June, right? And uh, even the fast food is opening. Right, but gyms are not right. So all these points Padma brought up, I was thinking, shit, it's so so much beneficial to work out. But then we also understand the fact that uh, of people gathering and you know they don't want the spread of the virus and all that. Um, laziness, you know, it, it is during the quarantine. You don't have a list of things to do throughout the day, right? So it's yeah. it's highly likely you wake up and you 
you ask yourself, have I done enough today? Right? Have I done not let's say let's not take it into just working out. Normal by normal, right? Um, I fall into that trap, right? So I realize that obviously you guys know I, I used to work out a lot with weights and all that. But then when the pandemic started, I just used one, I wanted to make it easy. So I just run, right? So the only thing I do is just run, right? So by doing that, it made me feel better after each run. But I realized I'm using it to make me feel better. That's it. Right? I didn't want to carry dumbbells. I didn't want to have dumbbells lying around. I didn't want my kids to play with the dumbbells. So it was an easier option. I go out, run, come back, and it's done for the day, you know? Um, but I also realized that uh, it's easy not to do it. It's easy not to work out, right? It's, it, I wouldn't call it lazy, but, you know, we are in this scenario that we can't adapt to what we need to do. We can't have schedules every day. I try to give myself a schedule, but half the time it doesn't work, right? Half the time you, te you tend to overdo your break time, you tend to overdo everything else. So I think laziness, when it comes to it, everybody's guilty about it. It's how many percent you can, you can let it eat into you and how much you can keep exercising and doing the rest of the work that you're supposed to do. That, that's basically it. I think uh, you 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 mentioned it, uh, nailed it up because I think this is a the period right because it's setting up a routine for us. It's yeah. either we're making yeah. it for greater, or are we making it for a disaster? So I yeah. think like what you mentioned, it it's nailed. And just you know you don't want to mess up with so much of weights. You just put your running shoes and just go out of your house and then go for the run and yeah. come back and yeah. then you feel yeah. good. Yeah. So and then the other thing yeah. about about the fact that, you know, like what you mentioned, uh, one and about the, uh, the the being lazy part, right? And I totally get it. Like, I, I, I understand, you know, like, I mean, I get lazy all the time. But uh, I also realized that, you know, um, I think um, being motivated is a very, uh, what do you call it? It's a, it's a very emotional based thing, right? Um, it's the same, like, you know, you won't be happy all the time. Some days you're normal, some days, you know, if anything happens that affects your mood and similar with the, with the motivation, you won't be highly charged up every day. So, but I think if you keep the exercise part, like something that what I, uh, I like to call, and this, I read this from somewhere, uh, they, they call it as non-negotiable thing uh, on a daily uh, routine. Like, like you can't negotiate, like you can't say no. Like it's it's always a yes when it comes to it. like like you it's a compulsory you have to do it you know so if you if you keep it that way um, be it fifteen minutes or thirty minutes but if you're clocking it every day now what happens that this routine this habit that you're doing uh, th this routine that you're clocking in eventually will then become a habit now that habit will then becomes part of you and then and you will realize that over time you actually um, it's it's not a it's not a big deal for you. It it eventually becomes a lifestyle. That's what we want. We want exercise to be part of your lifestyle. But a small win every day will actually help you to get there. You also said it so well, but because I think like we all saying the same thing because at this point of time the routine is so easy because we're just at home and we can easily fall into the pace of a lot of factors, no motivation. Uh, sense of you know no responsibility in terms of taking charge of health and, you know this happens because we're in the comfort so we, we can't blame but because of the situation that is given to us so thank you pat for sharing the uh, importance of uh, exercising during quarantine uh, we will keep all the q a so keep on coming in because we have a lot of uh, the questions are coming in so we will keep it for the end of the segment where we are allocating about 15 minutes or so for the q a so let's get mr sase <laughs> for the next topic uh, on the benefits of heat training. Sasi, it's all yeah, yours. It's all mine. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about heat training today because um, not only do um, we run a facility that focuses on heat training, but benefits of heat. Um, a long, I mean, for a long time as I've been a trainer, heat was the go-to way of working out for me because it actually gets kind of bitter and it keeps it at a shortest period of time, right? So when we, when we're stuck at home, heat training, which obviously turns out to be high intensity interval training. So when we're stuck at home, we, I mean, 
the routines where I go and run is easy for me. I mean, because you keep it at a stationary speed throughout and then you come back. But the addition of heat training is going to benefit a lot more, right? Um, many, many reasons to it because you, you get fitter faster, right? No, fit, fitness is not only about losing weight, right? It's about getting your muscles working together, getting your heart rate pumping together, right? Um, how heat training basically works, if you, if you explain how heat training works, it's a complete, like, a 30 to 40 second bout of complete maximal activity, right? And then you rest for an equivalent amount of time, right? Because if you do maximal activity and you rest for 10, 20 seconds and you can recover to do it again, then you're not maximizing your activity, right? So maximal activity, um, equivalent amount of time rest, and then you, you go out and do it again. So you're able to burn a bit, a lot more calories in a shorter period of time. So if you look at half an hour and you're doing, you know, 40 seconds work and 20 to 30 seconds rest, you are actually working for less, for slightly more than half the time, right? So the work, the time span is a lot less, right? The heart rate going up forces your heart, heart to get stronger and pump blood a lot faster, right? And I, I remember talking about this um, in the previous conversation where when your heart gets stronger, it has to force this amount of blood flow into your vessels which now then has to expand and, con and contract, right? So when the heart expands and contracts, the arteries expands and contracts, um, chances of it staying stagnant and building up, having classification and plug buildup is a lot less, right? Because any pipe that needs to expand and contract will never have buildup in it. I mean, it's one of those things that are always believed in. And with the fact that you can maximally um, expand all that energy in half an hour, and then go on to do a bit of weight workout, a bit of stationary workout. It's, it's just a lot better for the client to get fit faster, for the client to lose weight a lot faster. And a lot of people talk about the afterburn effect, which means if you do an all-out activity and you do heat training for 30 minutes, and then you leave the gym or wherever you worked out, your, your heart rate stays elevated for a certain period of time, right? And and that eventually burns a lot more calories. There are, you know, there are many studies on it. Some says that it only lasts for half an hour. Some says that it stays, it stays up to six hours. Is precisely the reason where you, let's say, you have an extremely hard workout at nine p.m. You're not going to fall asleep at 10, 10 p.m. You're not going to, because your adrenaline, adrenaline is up. Your hormones are all running. Your blood is rushing. Your heart rate is still elevated. You're not going to fall asleep, right? So the whole scenario is um, basically I wanted to talk about heat training because you can shorten your workouts, do it at home, be it you're doing push-ups, be it you're riding a bike, be it you're going out for a run, right? Um, anything, be it you're doing burpees. Everybody likes to do burpees right now, right? But it's a very, very effective way of getting all the muscles working. And honestly, um, Honestly, the human body is about movement, honestly, right? And as long as we can keep moving, be it burpees, be it push-ups, be it everything else, right? Uh, it's going to be golden. That's, that's what I think. You know, you don't need your one-hour workouts. You don't need your two-hour workouts right now. You've got to focus on getting moving. And obviously, Padma brought up the habit, right? We see Jessica talking about the habit as well. So creating a habit is not easy. If it was easy, everybody would have a habit. Everybody would be walking around fit, honestly, right? But creating a habit involves doing that hard thing, right? Like Pama said, it's not negotiable. Whether you do it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that 10 minutes eventually becomes a lot easier. That 15 minutes becomes a lot easier. You don't feel it. And then before you know it, you're up to 30 minutes, you know? So that is why I wanted to re-emphasize the the fact about heat training and how it works, right? Be it on a bike, be it anywhere else. Yeah. That was, uh... It's 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 really. I mean, I have to totally agree with you. Even now, like for me, and I do like. Uh, I mean, I have no access to weights, although the weights arrive much later. But yeah, heat heat training is the is the way to move, you know, uh, because it really gets your uh, blood pumping and you actually feel good throughout the whole day. Because like what you mentioned, the after effect, the, the burn. 
uh, it keeps it lasts long throughout the whole day. And I, if it's something that people um, uh, that uh, would like to start including in, into their routine, uh, as what uh, Sasi explained, heat training is the way to go, uh, because uh, you are in your confined space, you're not going anywhere. And you can have just that that square, uh, just uh, just a space, and you can do all sorts of training, just by moving it fast. There's like a lot of app, that's Instagram that you can follow, and so on. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you for the presentation. So Sasi, so we mentioned about heat training. So I'm now going to pose a question to you also, but very hypothetical question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so trying to be difficult here, right? I mean, that's why no, no, we no. get... When, when Vernon says hypothetical, I, my heart rate goes up a bit. <laughs> yeah, what's he going to say, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we got to say that, you know, we we grew in an environment where we were doing lectures, uh, conducting trainings for trainers. So, mm. I mean, all we, I learned from you as well and each other we improved. So, Sasi, so let's say for a beginner, right, who yeah. after doing our presentation and they feel that, you know what, this is the time to exercise, I'm going to exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Will that be safe for them to do that? Because that's the word safe. For yeah. Them. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, um, a lot of accidents, be it um, the heart conditions or everything else, right? Largely, it doesn't happen when you exercise. You know, I mean, that, that is a fact. And uh, with, with heat training, uh, I, remember, I remember when we first opened Fight Zone, everybody was like, oh, this is so hard. How am I going to do it? Right? Um, for beginners, it, it, you know, when we did the personal trainer course for the first time and we, when we were teaching it, there was this thing that we gauged, which was perceived rate of exertion, right? And basically, that's how much you can exert yourself, right? Um, for a beginner, what I feel is, yes, if you're going to get moving, if you're going to start out with 30 minutes, I mean, at the end of the day, some of us, I mean, if we work out frequently, we kind of like forget how it feels to be a beginner. Right, and a beginner can be at an extreme level where 20 minutes of normal exertion is going to really blanket them out. Right, and with heat training coming into play, um, it is it is largely how much you can do. Right, so if you're a beginner and and three push ups, five push ups is going to get you to an exertion level where you're really you're you really feel exhausted. Your perceived rate of exertion, you can't have a conversation, right? Then it is it is time to stop and rest, right? So for a beginner, I think it, it, get, it gets people fit faster. I've seen people go, go grow fitter from heat training, from being a beginner, so much faster than just doing stationary running, stationary bikes, you know, just walking. Um, but the perceived rate of exertion is, exertion is different for every human being. So if you know you're going to exert yourself, and with heat training, um, you actually, for a beginner, the, the first thing that happens is they actually run out of their glycogen stores, right? So within the first 15 minutes, they actually start feeling giddy. And a lot of them start feeling this, oh, God, this is bad. I'm feeling giddy, right? right? But then again, um, why do you feel giddy? You feel giddy because your body has has thought this amount of carbohydrates, which turns to glycogen, right? And uh, when your body is doing something it is not used to, right? I think Manan is going to talk about diabetes and insulin. What the body does is opens all these doors for the glycogen to rush into the muscles. But it is not; it does not expect you to keep doing this thing for the next 15, 20 minutes. It doesn't. So it opens the gateway. Immediately, all this glycogen rushes out. And within the 10-minute period, you start feeling lightheaded. It is not the end of the world. It doesn't mean you're extremely unfit. It doesn't. Your body just needs to get used to the fact that you are working out in this manner. Right? And there's two different types of uh, training in the sense that if someone goes on a stationary bike, or right now uh, the most popular bike is the air bike, the, the assault bikes, the air dines, right? Which the harder you pedal, the more resistance there is. Right, the first time you put someone on the bike, they feel lightheaded within the first two rounds, right? And that is because the body is not used to it, right? Compared to someone who does heat training running, right? And if you do running and then you incorporate a heat training workout where you do 
30 burpees, 20 pull-ups, uh, 20 skips. Because of all these exercises that come into play and your heart now has to pump blood to your legs and then up back to your shoulders, up back to doing a push-up and then back to skipping, you run out of glycogen very, very fast, right? But the thing I've noticed is for beginners, within the third workout session, right, the mind gets used to it. The body starts holding back some glycogen. They start lasting longer during the workout session. So for a beginner, it's hardly, I mean, we personal trainers, I mean, we're, at the end of the day, personal training right now, it is not cheap. It is not cheap, right? Right? Neither because personal trainers are not your drill sergeants. They're not. They are there to actually guide you from point A to point B, right? And as personal trainers, we got a gauge. You do not push people according to 18 reps. You don't do it, you fail. You cannot do that. You got to you got to see how your client feels. You got to see whether your client's exertion levels are at the maximum. You can't treat a beginner like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I totally agree like uh, and when you say personal training, it's it's personal, it's customized and it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be you know one size fits all because it's personal training and it has to be tailored so mm -hmm. to how much the client can do and help the client to progress from where he or she uh starting and then gradually bring them up to uh, a substantial uh, or like a, a average level of fitness yes uh, absolutely yeah totally yeah. agree I think this uh, topic is getting even more interesting because I can see a lot of uh, comments that's coming in. So thank you so much for all your comments. But if you have some questions that you have always in your mind and if you always want to chat with the uh, personal trainers, I think this is a time because you have all the gurus here. I mean, not self-claiming. Wow. <laughs> no. but, 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 but I got to say that, I mean, humbly that this is what we are called. In, okay. You know, some yes, some no, but that doesn't matter. But you know, in terms of uh, learning, it's always enriching to always to keep on learning and always to improve, even a matter of 1 cm or 2 cm, but it's always about improving. So thank you, Sasi. I think that was good because right now it seems like there's a, a, a constant um, repetition. Oh, if he's doing an 18 repetition, I want to do 20 repetition. If he's doing so, it's always been a competition, but that's why I'm going to cover to my topic, which is better health. But you have nailed it very nicely that it is individualized, custom-made, program for each and individual of the client as well as uh, Padma you also say that is it is have to be in that stage right to plan a training program for clients not just taking out a program and just giving it to anyone that doesn't work at all so thank you thank you guys I mean we have more um, uh, you see Sasi I mean you uh -huh. see someone like Sasi the guru you see there you go I'm not saying it people are doing it there you go uh thank you thank you thank you so i'm going to cover my 10 minutes of presentation i mean it's going to be a honor that i am at the privilege to share what i we always love to do so my topic is going to be a little bit more on better health um why i want to start this topic or rather it's important at this point of time is because in the fitness industry or rather for certain people or even for us it's always become like a competition padma is doing 20 repetition i want to do 30 repetition Sasi is lifting 20 kg. I want to ca carry 40 kg. All right. I think I think this is uh, some kind of motivation that that someone wants to follow. I think that's fine. But I think that the individual is putting so much of risk factors into them, and and that becomes an habit, and that becomes a culture. So that actually can cause us lots more injuries than ever before. And like example for an example, right? When we talk about the bone structure. If you're not used to do a certain exercise and suddenly you want to jump in, and that's what Sasi said it very clearly, that you know, for individual, especially as a beginner, you shouldn't be jumping into an intense exercises and then feel or put yourself into a, such a danger zone. So same comes to the better health, because if you notice it, it's not just about your biceps or your triceps and legs and you know, hamstring. No, it's not about that. I mean, it can be that. But what I'm saying is, let's turn inwards. All right, which is your inner words, which we are looking at your kidneys, your liver, your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system. There's so much of things is happening in our body. And it's working 24 hours without stop. I mean, of course, certain organ does have a break. They take a certain break, but we don't want the 
cardiovascular system to take a break because then it will be the <laughs> <laughs> then it will be the history of that particular person. But let's let's put it on that right. Um, over the past three weeks, I had a interview session with one of the greatest doctor, Doctor Dinesh Nayar. So he was saying that when we exercise, or when even when we feel exercising or certain exercises that we do, we are always putting ourselves into a danger zone. All right, even in the in the matter of posture, or even in the matter of increasing our heart rate, and this has to be done very periodization, right? But but what I feel, right, this is all our own takes. But I feel that there's a lot of competitions going on right there at the moment that you know we want to impress. We want to impress our spouses. We want to impress our friends. We want to impress our colleagues. And what happens? We only tend to do more than what we could do. But the more we do, and then the, the the lesser we push, or rather we push more, that is why we are putting a lot of danger. What do you think about this, Sasi or Padma? What is your take on that? Yeah, like uh, <clears throat> like I think it's okay to be inspired but not take it as a challenge uh, we need to know the, the 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 fine line there like you know you see somebody you see your colleague or your your better half is, is doing um good or uh, or your friend you know is maybe trying to like what you said you know like right now doing say deadlift 40 kg and you want to try to get to that yes it's possible but you need to, but you you need to give it time. Like you can't jump, you can't skip the steps and just jump straight to from level one to level ten, right? So I think it's okay to be inspired. Like you know, like you were like, oh wow, this person is doing so much. Uh, I someday or maybe hopefully soon I can be like that, but not like next day. So yeah, and should not take it as a competition. Uh, just be inspired. It's it's good and just work work towards that. What is your take of this on this, Sasi? I, I, you know, this, this it, right now, obviously, I'm uh, in my, I just reached 40 years old. If you ask me this when I was 25, it's a completely different mindset, isn't it? Now, you want to get ripped, you want to get big, you want to you have good shoulders. Um, right now, I think I'm happy being fit, right? Um, yeah, I, I think recently my one of my my, my kids, my six year old boy, asked me, "Papa, why are you not so lean anymore?" You know, and he said, uh, "You got to work harder." My my son told me I got to work harder because I'm not so lean anymore, right? But priorities change as we go along, and with everything that we are trying to do, right? Um, even with lifts, you know, even with working out, even with pull ups, push ups, whatever. Um, ligaments and joints also have to strengthen along with your muscle groups, right? And that is a process. It takes time to do that, right? So taking time to do that, some sometimes people can't wait, right? Sometimes we have, we also have those sixty-day transformations, the seventy-day, the eighty-day transformations. That's right. They put, they put a lot of stress on everyone, right, to get into a certain shape or get into a certain fitness. So. Ultimately, what I feel is periodizing and planning your routine, you know, planning what you want to be. And if you are not in a stage, let's say, imagine 20 years ago, right? And uh, let's say Padma wants to compete in a bodybuilding competition, let's say, right? And three of us are doing this show. We'll be talking about completely different things. We'll be talking about whether Padma is lean enough. We'll be talking about whether I can lift, I can do a deadlift that, you know, Right now, um, this whole topic is centered around lifestyle, right? And I, I really think the one thing people need now is you have your different kinds of people that come to the gym. The ones that really want to lose weight, the ones that are already fit, you are just a different mode of workout for them, right? And the ones that, um, you know, that just want to try to get fit, right? Some people hope that if they hire a personal trainer, they spend the money or they, they sign up for a gym membership, this gym membership is going to get them fit. I'm sorry to say it is not. Right? you got to go into the gym. you got to put in the hours. you got to put in the time before you get fit. That's the unfortunate truth of the world, right? So you always got to start somewhere and you always got to spend that time doing what, what is best. And what I feel right now is, is largely, largely personal-oriented. Right, people want to compete, yes. 
right? If you set, but if you don't set goals for yourself at all, you are not going to get better. That is the unfortunate truth, right? So, people, human beings just work better if they have goals, right? Be it you want to run the five click in 30 minutes, right? Uh, I'll tell you the truth. When I started running again at the circuit breaker, five clicks in 30 minutes was like, wow. It is uh, getting there itself was like a mental challenge, right? So, that, that whole scenario, actually, you got to set targets for yourself. And a lot of time, be it doing push ups, be it doing burpees, or be it just being healthy for your own kids. You want to run after them, right? You don't want to just sit down and watch Pokemon cartoons with them, right? So, that whole scenario, you got to have some targets for yourself that you set, right? Or your trainer sets for you. Right, like when you we all put, we all trainers, and when training our client is so important to to set the goals straight. The goals cannot be the trainer's goals, cannot be just the client's goal. It has to be something you guys reach an understanding among the both of you, right? And it has to be achievable. And when you reach that goal, when you reach that mountain, you always will have a higher mountain to climb, which doesn't seem so high anymore. And that that. That is what success is about, isn't it? Be it your own personal fitness or your own personal goals. That that is just what I feel. <laughs> and right now, all our goals, even what Barnan said, is just about being healthy. We don't want to be the most ripped. You know, we don't want to. We still want to have hair on our heads. You know, that kind of thing. You know, so that that is the ultimate goal right now. You know, you want to sustain this into a fifty-year-old, sixty-year-old, that kind of thing. And with most clients coming in. Um, most people right now, they, they get their full-time job and they start focusing on their work. And it takes a few years before they feel, oh, now i got to focus on my fitness too. Right? And that's where trainers come in and help, help you achieve that goals, right? But at the end of the day, the entire goal is you're still able to fulfill your work, your work stuff and still incorporate some fitness into your lifestyle. And that's, that's what we all want to achieve. Ultimately, if more people do that, the more clients every trainer has. Yeah, that's that's basically what I feel. Thank you, Sati. Thank you again. I only can keep on saying thank you, thank you, like a recorded <laughs> version. <laughs> thank you, because it's all on spot. If you look at it, our viewers are enjoying it. We have almost about 30 right now uh, tuning us. Thank you so much. I know there's few questions that keep on coming in. We are going to have another five or seven minutes more of my presentation to finish. And then after that, we will go into the question. So please keep on coming in. Um, so thanks, Sasi. I mean, for that, uh, it really matters because people, you know, uh, at the current stage, they're feeling so stressed up. When it comes to fitness, right? Um, I mean, probably you both guys will probably agree with me. This, this type of situation we've seen over the decades. Someone who only wants to take charge of their health or their fitness when they notice their scale has went up by another 3 kg or 4 kg, then only they hook up with a trainer and say, hey, I need to lose weight, buddy. Come on, I need to train. I think I think that is becoming a, a short-term goal. And also, you are abusing the body over the years. Why, why I'm saying this is because if you look at it, I think at the age of 14, 50, and 60, right, we tend to see a lot of cases that related to myocardial infarction, heart attacks. But right now, if you do see the trend, it is happening at the below the age of 30, and and is the, the numbers are just keep on coming lower and lower and lower. So there can be a, a lot of factors that we can talk about. We can even spend another three hours just to talk about this topic because I know both of my buddies would love to talk about cardiovascular system. I think that's one of the interesting systems that we always talk about. But what are the things that, that the, the poor guy is just beating on 24 hours without a break? The systolic pressure is there, diastolic pressure is there, your beats are there. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we are not taking care of it, right? So we need to do regular checkup. That's what I meant. We need to do at least a quarterly checkup to check, make sure that our blood pressures are fine. All right? You make sure you don't fall under the stage one or stage two, or even stage three of blood pressure. So it's a, all these are indications for you to understand that, hey, I got a situation and I need to fix it. All right? So it's always the best thing is that you check up with the doctor before starting up an exercise program. But having said that, that is just a heart system that we talked about. But let's go into the diabetes. All right. When we all love food, we all got to agree. And sometimes we can carry it away with the food. And this happened to me and this happens to everyone that we tend to eat a little bit more. Right. With the given situation that where we are right now. But that's perfectly fine. But 
you got to take action immediately if you notice that the scale is coming up. Or you can make a decision before the scale is going up. So there's a few areas that you can take responsibility of your weight. L looking good, feeling good is fine. Looking healthier is the perfect way to be. If we only exercise, if we only exercise when we start to put on weight, then I think we are going to be in a great danger. Especially if we notice that I put on 5 kg, I need to start exercising. Then you're putting yourself into a danger. Then you heat up to the gyms or you go and do your runs. I think your body is not conditioned to that. And that's why we see some cases, some athletes, when they're exercising, certain danger zones are happening to them. So I think it's very important that you need to check your HbA1c. That is only can be checked with by a doctor to make sure that what was your past three months of your abusing of the system. If you have been taking certain kind of soft drinks every day, eating all the sweets, probably your HbA1c will shoot up high. And that's an indication for the doctor and for yourself to say that, hey, you need to go on a medication or you need to change your lifestyle before you can be all <coughs> I was you as a diabetes. So there's a lot of choices within us, but it's again up to us, how do we want to react? And I think most often when we talk about exercise or taking charge of health, that's only one thing that's coming in, looking good, feeling good. That's perfectly fine, like what Sassi and Pat have said in their views. But I think that one of the other factors is also to take charge of your health, which is the inner part, where all your organs are. What do you say about these guys? Well, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, what, um, as I s mentioned earlier, health is the real wealth, right? So you want to make sure you, you keep this going for, you know, even when you get to 50 or 60 or 70, um, and still be able to move and run around your kids, your grand grandkids, you know, still be able to, you know, um, uh, climb up the stairs and, you know, not uh, half and puff, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, and still be able to um, live life without any kind of um, uh, mobility restrictions. So like when you mentioned about diabetes and we know what diabetes eventually can do and I have had <coughs> personal experience dealing with <coughs> diabetes within my own family, you know, um, you know, you can lose your limbs with diabetes, right? If it gets too much, right? <coughs> and then what happens then that becomes a mobility res restriction you cannot live like live life like other people right so that's that's the most important thing over here so you want to be able to exercise stay healthy and and not have any kind of this sort of mobility restriction because because when that happens it's going to just rob your life away from the from the time it happens till the rest of your life you know it, it, it's going to just rob your time on this earth so that's why it's very important to to start getting healthy and you will never regret getting into a routine uh and like what uh Vanden and sassy mentioned like um yes uh looking good and you know try and lose weight and all that's great but you also must look into the long term you want to be able to do this for the rest of your life not just now so uh yes you have a short-term goal that should kick start your journey but uh, but also think at the longer term because you are in it for a long run. Thank you, Padma. Thank you so much. Sasi, what is your take on that? Sassi? I think um, you always got to keep an eye on your health, but um, it's easier said than done, unfortunately, right? Um, if I look at us, we have been in the fitness industry for so long, we already know that we need to keep healthy, we need to do this, but the majority of people out there it's it's so hard to get in there you know it's so hard to even start it's so hard to even give up that soft drink daily you know so um as trainers we always know that there is this progression you got to slowly convince your client not to have that soft drink initially they will try and talk to you saying that can i have this on my cheat day right like uh, can i have some alcohol on my cheat day right and and i used to um, one of the one of the diets we all know about is keto, right? Right, and everybody uses keto. But the moment you have alcohol, your keto ketosis system is shut down for almost twenty four hours. It doesn't work anymore, right? So that that whole scenario being 
people have to get used to creating good habits all around. It has to be all around, but be it going for the HBA 1C test or be it getting their cardiovascular system checked, right? We have, um, I, I remember asking a question on your talk when you had the heart matters, right? Where you see a lot of fit people having cardiovascular disease, right? Um, you also wonder because this person is able to run that 10 clicks, 21 clicks, you see, he doesn't need to really watch his diet, does he, right? Because he can eat what he wants 75% of the time or 50% of the time. But unfortunately, eating what you want doesn't, doesn't always affect you just in numbers. It affects your heart, it affects your liver, it affects the whole chain of events that happen in your body. And I think creating good habits and even right now for all of us, right? Teaching our children the good habits starts from day one, right? So the importance of uh, feeling uh, fit, looking good, and uh, importance of not having uh, everything in moderation, I guess, right? As much as I can try and have everything in moderation, there's always one or two weakness that you and I both have, all of us have, right? So teaching, educating, when you come on as a trainer, it's a lot about educating your client. And it is not just about achieving that 30, 30 sessions and achieving that weight loss and going on, right? It's about educating your client to live a better life, right? And you almost become a lifestyle coach because, you know, you try... And if you're a trainer and you are actually starting to be a uh, coach lifestyle, you got to have a decent lifestyle yourself, right? You, I'm, I don't mean give up everything that's bad. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure you keep track, you at least get your checkups in, and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, Sasi. Again, a recorded version. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the best part right now is there's so many questions that's coming up. I'm not sure which to take in as, as to go by, but uh, let me just finish it up within two minutes, and then we will go into the questions. So when we talk about uh, better health, uh, that can be a lot of uh, things that can be involved, right? We want to make sure that, like what we mentioned, and Sasi also probably agree with that, your so HbA1c is very important, that you really need to check with your doctors and to check your... It's just like a maintenance, that you need to do a month, yearly man, maintenance at least twice or once, whatever the recommendation of your doctor. Because the, the numbers are a bit scary. You know, when we did a statistic from 2016 to now, um, and probably it can be a lot of factors, stress factor, food, lifestyle, lack of exercises, and hereditary that you know we got it from. So based on that, there's a lot of numbers are showing that people are getting a lot of illnesses that is way much more below than comparison. In the past, we say, hey, you know, someone has a cardiac, cardiovascular attack or, you know, a heart attack. You know, probably it's only in 70s or 80s, but right now these things are happening even at a lower age. So I think um, sometimes you're afraid to go for the medical checkup just to check a, a normal medical checkup, you know, just by doing a, a basic blood test or, you know, treadmill test or stress test, just to check up your overall health. I think that is most important. Um, like what Sasi and Pat also said, I got to cannot agree any much more that, you know, fitness is not just about, you know, how much he can live and I want to live heavier because that is becoming the trend. And if we do have inspiration, we might want to get there gradually, not just jumping in immediately and want to do it. Because there's also another thing that is going like body shaming. Like, you know, people when in a different sizes of body, you know, they tend to shame that particular person in a, in a way that, you know, I'm having a great body. So when we talk about health or fitness, it's not just about looking good, right? A person can be looking fantastic, you know, great body. But eventually you might notice that he might have some illnesses. So let's not compare you know, what you see outside, but the content is what is most important, where the internal, which your soft organs are very much important. So let's take care of that and also let's aesthetically look good. I think in that way, we are covering the both. Don't you agree, guys? Yes, absolutely. absolutely yeah. Okay, so let's uh, now jump into the question and um, it looks like a lot of them are coming in. So let's maybe, Padma, maybe this can be addressed to you. We have... Uh, Sheila has asked this question, so maybe you're going to take it. I've seen many go hall eggs at the gym, but then, for example. 
Um, yes, Sheila, it's definitely um, daily good eating habits are very important. And, um, and of course, exercise alone um, itself won't be sufficient. It has to be, it has to be done both because uh, exercise makes you fit right strengthens your heart strengthens your muscles your joints and everything maybe minuses up some calories but what really matters is what you put in into your body so and that way when you put in the right stuff like nutritional uh, uh, good nutrition goes into your body um, you pay attention to the amount of sugar salt um, um, carbohydrates fat that goes into your body that way you're actually taking care of your body um, uh, and, and more than anything, I think it's just the way how we should love and respect the body and not to abuse it by putting all those, um, especially processed food. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, exercise and uh, good eating habit goes hand in hand. Um, and I completely agree with cheat day. Even The Rock does cheat day once a week. So he's a pro wrestler. If he does it, I'm pretty sure all of us can do it. So there should be a bit of, uh, uh, I always practice 80, 80, 20%, 80%, you know, you be conscious and 20%, maybe you can, you know, uh, take a break and try to indulge on the things that you like. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you want to be able to do this for the for a long period of time. It has to be something sustainable. You know, if, you, if you're going to go on a drill, drill sergeant mode, no, you have to eat this and only this, you know. And you won't be able to then go out, socialize, and eat the things you want, you know, or with the family and things like that. And you'll be the odd ones out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think balance is the key. 80, 20, 80, 80 and 20 percent, like 80 percent, or be conscious and 20 percent, uh, give and take every now and then. I think uh, is it's it's very important, and, and it's the way to go. Thank you, Pat, for taking the uh, question over there. And I hope that uh, answer um, goes to her. And if you do need more, you can also contact Pat and I also ask him. So not a problem on that. Uh, Sasi, we have uh, one that uh, from Rudy and it's yeah. directed to you. So you want to take this? Yeah, um, Rudy is my uh, primary school mate, secondary school mate. Yeah. Based on prison, who's, who's into it? He's a uh, P teacher right now. Um, based on principles of fitness, should, shouldn't we always try to do better, push a little, improve on progression, base and overload? Which is all correct, right? Which is all correct, which is what we should do, right? But um, the thing is, if you live a fitness lifestyle, that's how you live it. You want to progress. You want to be able to do this. You want to instill your teachings into your clients, right? But a lot of times we get, we get clients or people coming in that have... Um, Progression into getting a good posture while doing that exercise is a victory for us, right? Right? And progression into knowing, understanding um, <clears throat> the mind-muscle connection when you do it uh, is also a victory for us, really. So progression has a lot, a lot of ways to it. It depends on your level of fitness and how much you know, right? And we also have a lot of weekend warriors coming up, right, who who used to work out for a long period of time, had fitness in their lifestyle and started working and did not have fitness in their lifestyle, started playing games or doing activities in the weekend, thinking the mind is still the same. You know, you are what you used to be able to do. But unfortunately, the body is not. You know, the body has, has kind of like lagged behind a bit, has rusted joints a bit. But I think the principle of fitness, always try and do better, in, involves mental health involves joint health, involves the how the person feels, right? The person, I mean, as a trainer, when I was a trainer, I used to always, you know, maxing out your clients is not always the best thing, right? Because if they don't look forward to your sessions anymore, then they're not going to look forward to come and see you. They try and find a million ways to cancel it, right? So when I was a new trainer, the, the idea of maxing out the client um, was very, very rife. Everybody wanted to do it, but you can't. You've got to create sustainability, right? So progression comes in many ways, whether it's more reps, whether it's strength, whether it's a better time, whether you can uh, 
improve based on overload? Yes, of course, right? But in our time frame, it also includes the normal person that can work out a bit longer, that can keep focus a bit longer. You also have clients who lose focus after 30 minutes because they don't want, they always buy time. They sit down there, oh, I need to, yeah. So the thing is, it involves a lot of factors. Fitness as a whole always will and should involve progression. You always got to keep better, keep getting better. And you got to keep getting better against your own self, right? So if it's a client, it's that client's own self. So you challenge, you always be better than what you were yesterday. And that's that's how we progress, and that's how we always do this. Go ahead, Vernon. Uh, thank you, Rudy. I mean, for that question. I mean, I'm sure Sasi have um, explained that very nicely and clearly. And uh, thank you for that question, Rudy. So for there's another question that's coming up, Katri uh, Gayen, and uh, I think I will take that. I have a question. After one has achieved their fitness goal, what will be the best motivation to continue to maintain that fitness? I think that was a very uh, interesting um, question that uh, you have posted, buddy. Because I think one who achieve the fitness uh, goal, I think they always have to constantly evolve. Because if you don't get evolved, if you are stationary, then probably it's going to be a hassle. But having like what you have mentioned, that if someone has already achieved it and if they think that this is the best performance they've ever been, then I think it's uh, already you are might have developed a culture, a habit, and a routine. So I think the key is the routine because even if you miss it up for, say, two to three days, you know that you have missed up something and you need to say, you know what, I need to get it done. So it's a, a little bit more on a discipline where character building as well is very important. So exercise also develops. So if you look at people who are exercising regularly and like six times a week or seven times a week, they have already developed a culture. They have already develop a routine that can't be changed away immediately. And especially if during this pandemic time, the challenging times, if you notice that they have been disturbed as well. And that's why they are keeping it themselves by doing exercises in home as well. So it's very proud to see that most of the HDPs right now are all converted to a gym in their own room with a yoga mat, with the dumbbells, with the water bottles, with the rice pack. So these are all uh, additional tools that you can get at this point of time because now you want to buy dumbbells, it's going to be a bit tough unless you have to go and order it. So keep it going. So just push it back to the routine and your culture that you have developed because it is a journey that you have taken in and with all the hard work to reach that goal. So I think it's more about developing and character building. That's where we'll keep you maintaining your fitness all the way. I hope that explained to you, buddy. Uh, we have one more, maybe uh, uh, part, maybe you want to answer this part. I like to more he's going to once in a while, but should I Sorry? stop if I read? No, I, I think Sorry? he's going to say, right, Palmas, your perfect answer should be the rock drinks tequila all the time, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Suresh, uh, Vanas, uh, yep. So, uh, Sasi had just said, you know, if you follow the rock on Instagram, you know, he is, he's, he's everything. Like he's a wrestler, he's uh, he's into fitness, and you know he's been looked up by many peers, and you know basically everybody knows him. And even he drinks. He has his new brand Taramana Tequila that he drinks and has it once a week. So I don't think um, that should hinder your progress. Um, and I don't think that yeah that has much related to the fitness, you know, because it's a two different thing. Um, you can just. Just don't drink and drink the liquor now and then get into the gym within an hour because that, that's, a, that's a very bad idea. So <clears throat> having alcohol in your, in your, in your lifestyle, it's, it's not a bad idea, but obviously you don't want to do it excess, excessively uh, uh, within a limit, uh, within the um, amount of calorie you should be consuming on a daily basis. And I think, um, and yeah, and you still can go to the gym. That, that should not be a problem. Okay, Suresh. Uh, Pat has already told you the answer. So don't drink too much. Gradual, huh? <laughs> can drink. <laughs> I can drink water. All right, drink lots of water. All right? uh, Sasi, you have another one for you. Oh, really? So she, she wants to start training and she wants to probably want to get into fight zone. 
So for, that's why I think that question was addressed to you. So you might want to take it on with her. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, she can. Um, I'll take it offline. I'll. Yep. I'll, you can send a text to Fight Zone. You can DM our Instagram page or Facebook page, and we'll get back to you on that. Thank you, Nandini, for that uh, question. That that shows that a lot of them are constantly asking us a lot of questions. Um, we we let me see. I have uh, I have a few more questions that's coming up. But before that, uh, guys, I mean, is there any takeaway for anybody who's here? I mean. The best advice for each of us, I think, if we give it, I think that will be very uh, blessing for them at this point of time. I mean, something that is not short, not too long, but just the right, maybe within two to three minutes. Maybe Sasi, you want to take it first, Sasi? Yeah, I think honestly, the best advice I can give right now is is um, keeping healthy is not only about fitness; it's also about your mental health. Because only if you get your mental health going, that game has to go on, right? For you to eat right, for you to keep healthy, for you to do things in moderation, for you to be happy, right? Um, I, I had a couple of conversations with business owners today that were, were just stressed out by the scenario because the entire world is... It, it is not that you know this is definitely going to happen. There's so much uncertainties. That, you know, it, it's almost like, why should I work out, right? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? And and honestly, if you keep your mental health healthy and you create a routine, and like Vanan said, you know, you also got to create a routine to check on yourself, right? And you also, like like Van said, you know, uh, Suresh Vanas, right? He's, he asked about drinking liquor. You got to do what it takes to keep your mental health steady. You know, you can't stay away from everything and you can't also do everything at extremes, right? And a lot of times when they when they say success is about being obsessed about getting successful, you know, you got to do that to moderation. I think even when we, we talk about The Rock so much, right? I think he's one of the greatest people in motivating people. I, I wonder how much he sleeps. You know, he got to wake up, he's got to work out, he's got to eat that amount of food every day to keep keep his size you know he's got so many businesses going but it's all about being motivated to do what you want right if you want to keep fit for be it for your kids or be it you want to do this year and be fitter at the end of the year you got to set goals and you got to do things in moderation you got to want to do it for yourself you can't do it for someone else you can't do it for your partner you can't, you got to do it for yourself and that's entirely what my piece of advice is Right now, if you want to embark on something, make sure you want it for yourself. And make sure you do it so that you feel happy about it. There's really no point doing something that you hate or you don't feel happy about. That, that, that's basically all I have to say, right? Thank you, Sasi. Uh, yeah. How about uh, Pat? Yeah, so it's just correlating to what Sasi just mentioned. Um, if you guys, um, if you guys, could imagine i'm pretty sure all of you guys know this you know how in a plane the scenario in a plane when an emergency you before you can actually put the oxygen mask to the ones next to you or even your baby you first must protect yourself right you must have it on to yourself first and then you go on to the others it's the same thing like what just uh, sasi just mentioned you have to first pay attention to yourself right a lot of self-love you know and that can come through uh, starting out, uh, you know, starting to work out because I think um, working on your physical health is actually a very, it's actually a, a first step towards um, strengthening your mental health, especially during uh, this quarantine period. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs. The whole world is currently unrest. So, and you want to make sure that you, um, because we are, we all of us are in it, in this together. So you need to make sure you you stay sane. And how are you gonna do that? Um, I mean, start uh, including exercise into your daily life. Like what we spoke about earlier, like fifteen minutes. It's still something. Anything that gets you sweat, anything that makes you to move from just sitting, it's gonna do you a lot of good. And keep that going on a daily basis. Set a goal for yourself. Um, uh, and uh, and I think having a goal is very crucial, very important during times like this. At least you wake up and you know what you, you are about to do. 
right? Instead of no goals, then you just wake up and you are like, what I'm going to do today? Like, should I do this? Should I do that? There's no plans. But if you have, if you plan ahead, then chances of you succeeding is a lot higher, right? So this is why when you have this proper plan or a schedule and you just nail it every day, and that eventually becomes a habit. And who knows, maybe after the whole quarantine is over, you can then, you be more ready to get into the gym. If you all along, you've been thinking, you know, how am I supposed to start at the gym? Do I have to hire a personal trainer? Or do I have, I have no clue about using the equipment and all that. But you can always start from home right now. Yeah, this is what I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it should be a, a takeaway for all the, all the viewers. Thank you, Pat, for that. Uh, my takeaway is I think um, it's, it's pretty much on more on your health because I think that is the wealth that we are talking about. So do your regular medical checkups. I think that's one part where most of us don't do it un unless it's a corporate company where it's compulsory insurance. Then people have been forced to go for the medical checkup. Apart from that, uh, some people just think that they'll be fine. I mean, it's good. There's a positive thinking. But again, you have to take responsibility of your the only place that we live. We often say that we live in the world, but it's not true. You're actually living within yourself. Uh, that is the most important and the wealth that no one can buy. All right. So take charge of your health and be fit, be healthy always. And I also want to make another point that if, if possible, do have a chat with your favorite trainers. I think these guys out there are ready to help you guys out, all right? Even for a chat. And if you want to hear some experts' views or maybe, you know, you want to get certain goals done, you know, talk to them. I think they are all friendly guys around there. There are tons of trainers out there. Make sure that you get the right one that you prefer. Have a chat with them. I think they are most friendly and most happy to give you any kind of advices at this point of time because most of us are now conducting most of the time in the virtual space, our whole home. So once the circuit breaker is, I mean, all over, then I think it's going to be a full force on getting into a, a routine again, you know, to set up the same routine. So in the meantime, we all have to be stay focused, laser focused. But um, that's that's my take. Um, Sasti, I think we have one more um, one more question. I think that we should address uh, one meal a day diet. Yep. Do you want to go on that? It has become a trend these days. This is our last question from this weaver. Yeah. So one meal a day. I mean, at the end of the day, the human body, an average human body, burns on average, even if even if they're not working out, a thousand two hundred to thousand three hundred a day, right? And uh, one meal a day, yes, it works in a sense that if you want to lose weight, there's only so much calories you can eat in that one meal, correct? Can you eat a 1,200 calorie meal? Yes, you can, right? But more than likely, you're not going to do that all the time, right? And it is popular because of two things. Because generally, if you have some form of workout during the day and you still burn 1,200 calories and you burn 200 calories, going to the gym or going for a run, you have burned 1,500 calories. But your meal, right? Let's say your meal is only 800 calories. You are in deficit of 700 calories. There is no way you can't lose weight. But are you going to get leaner? I don't know. Because the body is a very, very smart. It's a supercomputer, right? If you are not feeding the body enough, the body will not want to lose weight. It will not. It will not want to lose fat, right? The more fat it loses, it's going to change your engine. I mean, I always talk about this even when I teach courses. Um, you want to change your engine from a Toyota to a Ferrari because the Toyota burns uh, less fuel. The Ferrari burns more fuel because it uses a lot of horsepower, right? But when you eat only one meal a day, there's no way your body is going to get all the nutrients it needs, right? unless you can carefully tailor that one meal, right? But the one meal is very popular nowadays, including intermittent fasting. Um, there's two different concepts to it, right? Um, intermittent fasting and one meal a day. Um, intermittent fasting allows you to eat for a period of time, right? It allows you to eat between four to eight hours, right? Whereas one meal a day is just one meal, right? And honestly, whether I agree with it or not, a person who does one meal a day will eventually lose weight, right? It will, that person will lose weight. And because the person loses weight, everybody's going to think it's a good form of, yeah, it's a good form of uh, diet. Um, I, I do not think in this day and time it's a good form because 
unless people can eat everything they need in that one meal, then it's okay. But then again, we were, we, I mean, humans a hundred years ago did not have breakfast, lunch, tea time, and dinner. They did not have five meals, right? More than likely, they will go and harvest or catch a meal and eat one big meal, right? You're, I mean, it's, it's how we work. So there's pros and cons to it. Unless you can actually eat everything you need in that meal, please go ahead. If you are going to just do one meal a day and eat pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken, I would tell you it will do you more harm than good. But you will still lose weight. That's how it is. Thank yeah. you, Sasi. I think I said thank you. I think, but Pat, I think I used thank you for more than 30 times already. Yeah? <laughs> it's always nice to give back than yeah. uh, to take. <laughs> yeah. So there's so many types of thank you. Uh, I think this is a very interesting topic today because we still have constant flow of audience that's watching us live. Thank you so much. And um, I think we, we, we spent almost one hour, 30 minutes on a Monday. Today's Monday, right? Yeah. Monday. yeah. <laughs> I, I, love, I love some time and dates, so it's a good thing. Um, and, and constantly as we speak, there's more uh, more more questions that's coming up. I think, um, I think thank you so much. And if you do have any particular question that you want to address to our speakers, to myself or to Sasi or even to Pat, I think all our names have been tagged here. So you can actually contact us and we are happy to have a chat even for a period of 10 minutes or 15 minutes if the time allows us, if we don't have any session. So please try to get connected. Um, please, if you do have any of your trainers, have a chat with them. Talk about things that how you can start planning after the post-COVID-19 pandemic, you know, because that is a time that you can actually start planning ahead. So please focus on that. Keep yourself healthy and fit. Um, Pat and Sasi, any any uh, parting words? I know we have already said the advice, but uh, any parting words? Not parting, huh? Parting words. <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, I mean, I want to thank the viewers for you know staying up um, for the past one hour plus. You know, um, listening to us and thank you very much. We really appreciate you, and I hope uh, uh, you could take back something that we have discussed and put it into practice. And I also saw some of my clients. Uh, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, thank you for your support. Um, yeah, we hope to keep this going. And uh, and also, I'm very privileged to be able to sit down and uh, do this discussion with the two of you. Vadan and Sasi, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I couldn't ask for any more during this, uh, this, this period. And I think um, being able to uh, speak um, with the people from the same industry, it really, um, uh, what do you say? It really makes me um, happy. I look forward to uh, because uh, it's now nowadays. You know, it's so hard to meet anybody in person. So, and this is a virtual thing. It is great. I think we should keep this going. And Van, and this is a great. It's an excellent initiative you've started, and I'm and I'm I'm I, I think I think I'll support this throughout this pandemic or even after that. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for the kind words, loving words, Sasi. Thank you for having me, Vanan. Um, it's always nice to to be on your show. It's a bit entertaining now. I think we've gone on for one hour thirty minutes. I, yeah, I did. did. It is that long, right? But if you yeah, think about no. flights, we're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> all, all this, all these guys um, tuning on and listening to us for the past one hour. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it's a public holiday. Uh, uh, Selamat Hari Raya to those celebrating. Um, have a good one. Please uh, keep in mind what you want to do. Write down the things you want to do. Have a plan for yourself. We don't know how long this will last, right? Um, I we also don't know how long it will take to go back to normal, right? And there's always a new normal that we are always worried about. So, um, yeah, thank you for having me, Manan. Thank you so much, guys. I, I think we enjoyed this session because this session can run for even another two more hours or three more hours. But I'm sure, you know, because the, 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 the good thing about right now, we are continuing because because of the viewers, right? The viewers yeah. are constantly supporting. I know there's some kind of messages that you want to take back. But if you are shy or if you do not like to be your names to be flashed here, you can always feel free to contact any one of us because we, I mean, we hardly say we have no time for anyone. As long you take charge of your life, you want to take charge of your health, 
you want to get better, just contact us. Or we can even divert you to some other trainers if we know that for a particular thing that you need to do because we all work together. And I think it, together, that's where we are going to go further. You know, if you always believe that, you know, you're the only one, then probably it's just a short sprint. You will get exhausted and probably you will be taking longer breaks. So let's move in together and work together for better prosperity and better health after the post-COVID-19. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. We will connect again offline. Thank you, guys. See ya. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.